Hello, this is David with Oklahoma Ham Radio. My call sign is W5OHR. If you would, please like and subscribe this video, and I'll give a brief description about uh, what, what I've been working on the past week or so. I'm interested in building kind of like a DX Commander. Uh, the work that Callum has done is fascinating to me. And I don't have the money to go buy the antenna that I want right now. So it's time to experiment, which to me is what ham radio is all about. So in this video, I designed some parts uh, for my antenna. I 3D print those, I mount those. That's really what this video is about. There's a lot of people that have been talking about 3D printing with amateur radio right now. Um, and this is one, one example of of where it's cool. Now you can go out to Thingiverse and you can download parts and you can 3D print those and, and that's that's cool. Um, and that's fine if that's all you want to do. But if you want to design your own parts, this video goes into some of that and goes into 3D printing and showing the finished product and it being mounted on the antenna. Um, this weekend I'll be working on actually running the wire and uh, doing some tests on the antenna. So stick around, check it out, please. So the program I use to design parts is called, uh, let's see, Fusion 360. I did take some CAD classes 30 plus years ago, um, you know, and uh, a lot of it is lost on me. It, it was a lot more complicated back then. Windows was barely a thing. So um, what I do here is build a cylinder and then I poke a hole in that cylinder and then adjust the location of that hole and the size of that hole. What that's for uh, is to uh, you know, uh, slide on the mast and I, I happen to know the sizes that I needed due to 3D printing some other objects. So um, here I just am working on the, oh, I guess the element supports. So I, I go through and see how they would look and do some thinking along the way to try to come up with what the best design would be. Now along the bottom of the the element support, I, I really can't do anything. Um, I need to kind of keep that clear because I do have that mast mounted against a, uh, you know, the tilt plate. So I don't have a whole lot of room. So finally I decide on what the layout is that I want. I know that coming off of the top of this brace is going to be a piece and I merge that piece in with the ring that's created so now it's one solid piece so then I go around and uh, put the the two pieces on the what I would consider the the back quarter of this uh, the support And what, what I have to focus on is I can't extend diagonally down, otherwise I run into that tilt plate. So basically I come off of the, the back side a little bit. I make these a little thinner because I, I don't even know how thick I need to make these really. And I want to test having some thinner support pieces so that maybe I can do more than five elements eventually. Uh, but I draw that piece and then uh, continue adding additional pieces here. I just kind of drag across to make sure I'm in the right spot. I know approximately what width I need and the length, draw it, and then join it or merge it. So now I'm, I start working on the diagonal pieces or the pieces going out at 45 degrees. What I do here is just eyeball everything. So uh, there are ways to get exact and, you know, just like ham radio, 
to me, building something on your own is, you know, you can be extremely particular about it. You can get exact measurements and, uh, you know, get really complex with it. But uh, in, in this experiment, I did not need something to be exact. I just needed those element wires to be spaced. So here I select the entire object and I rotate it and put it in place where it needs to be uh, in order to come off at that 45 degree angle roughly and give me the the spacing between the other two elements that I think I would need. Here I'm just adjusting, rotating, looking, making sure that things look all right and then when I'm happy I merge it in place with the other piece. So now I've got four of the five spreaders done. Oh here I do extend it just a little bit into the other piece just to make sure that uh, you know it's it's not got any gaps and then I select everything and I merge them together. Next is to do the other side. Now you can, uh, there's ways to take a piece and tell it to basically mirror on the other side. I used to do that a lot. Uh, this time I was just trying to, like I said, eyeball everything and uh, get it as close as I thought I needed it. Um, and with the older versions of AutoCAD, I know how to do that. With the newer versions of AutoCAD or uh, Fusion 360, I don't necessarily know how to do that and have not taken the time to learn that simply because it's so easy to, uh, you know, to go in and figure out visually where things need to be placed. So. Here I'm happy, may not be perfect, but it's good enough for me. So I merge all the parts together. Now I, I don't like sharp corners. So here I, I flatten that corner, take a look at it and say, eh, maybe I want to round those corners. I am a believer with 3D printing in having rounded quarters, corners. Uh, I'm also a believer that sharp edges, e even though not knife sharp, but sharp edges and things like guy wires or, or uh, you know, anything that's got friction don't really go together. So here I knock down all those edges, go along, do the backside here, knock down all those edges. Here I'm just going around selecting. I realize that the mouse does not match exactly what I was selecting on the screen. Uh, that's simply because of the capture software that I was using when I was creating this. But you, you just select what you need. So here I zoom in and I decide to go ahead and fillet the joints on the inside also. I believe that that will give a little bit of extra strength by flying those. And then ultimately I go all the way around the outside sharp edges on uh, those, oh, at the ends there of each one of the sports, and I flay those also. Unfortunately, this capture software did not capture the pop-ups that were happening where you actually set the oh the settings right where you say okay i'm gonna fillet this at, at two millimeters three millimeters five millimeters whatever so uh, your my recommendation is to experiment with it so 
So this, uh, this is a simple 3D printed part. It, you know, like I said in the intro, there's a lot of people talking about 3D printing within, within uh, amateur radio right now and what you could use those things for. And this is a piece that, that I designed out of necessity and I say necessity, I want to experiment and, uh, you know, I, I don't have to wait for something to be shipped. And it's not like I can go to HRO or anywhere like that and buy this piece. Uh, not for my specific requirement. So the next thing is uh, that I work on after taking a look, I put a hole in the back side to allow a screw to be screwed into the mast to support um, you know this this uh, element support so I use a hole to do that shrink that hole down to where I think it needs to be go ahead and poke it through and take a look at it see where I you know where it's going to be at looks good enough so now I need to poke the holes in the support elements where the the uh, I'm sorry in the support I guess arms where the elements will feed through now when I designed this originally these these holes were too small um, so I ended up going back in and making them larger and then you know 3d printing again so when I printed I checked to see you know, I, I let something, one of these pieces print about halfway through, stopped the print, went and checked because I don't need to waste a ton of filament for, you know, to check hole sizes. And, uh, you know, discovered that, that those holes were a little too small. Now these three uh, arms, I had no problem using holes to poke through, uh, you know, but on these two on the bottom, it was more complicated. Uh, for some reason, that the hole kept trying to snap over to the um, intersections. And I probably should have just turned off snap. But what I did instead was drew another cylinder and extruded it negatively through the piece, which allowed me to... Um, you know, put a hole through through those more congested areas. Uh, previously, that's the way you used to make holes. You used to draw the shape of the hole the way that you wanted it, and then you would extrude it in a negative direction, which would then penetrate the object making the hole. Here I go ahead and copy that, um, that piece that I've drawn, I drag it over there, drop it off where it needs to be, take a look at it and decide, yep, that's a good spot for a hole. So now I extrude in a negative direction and it generates the hole for me. And I do the same thing on the other side. So now I've got those holes. I use Simplify 3D as my slicer. So the next few screens are just the settings in Simplify 3D that I use. And these could be translated hopefully to any slicer. Coming up, I do some printing and show a lit very little bit of that. And uh, I stop that print partially through so that I could you know, not waste filament, so on and so forth, and still get all my measurements to make sure that they were working right. This piece coming up is the paused piece, um, and then these are the finished pieces. And uh, this is those pieces installed on the antenna waiting for me to get things wired up. And this is just showing the, ground, the grass growing over those ground radials. 
I appreciate you guys uh, taking a look at this video. Please like and subscribe. Next week we'll be uh, adding those those ground. Or I'm sorry, those elements for those five, um, you know, different bands. Seventy three.